So, you've just brought your first sounder. You brought your Hummingbird Helix 8. It's nice and fitted to the boat, powered up. How do you use it? So now we're gonna take it for a quick run through, first off, of all these buttons down on the right side of the unit and tell you exactly what they mean and what they do. So we'll start up from the top here, your view button. What this allows you to do is actually change your views on your screen between your sonar and your mapping units. This also has a second feature, which is a hot key. You actually hold it for a couple of seconds and a drop down menu will appear up in the center of the screen. This allows you to go through quickly and choose the exact image that you're wanting to put on your hummingbird. To the left of the view button is the plus and minus. Now what this allows you to do is adjust your contrast quick and easily while you're out on the water. So you can see down here, our sonar is actually deepening or brightening in color. Now our arrows are simply navigational tools. So this just allows you to navigate through the sounder, left, right, up and down through your menu screens. Your menu button also has two features. With one press, it brings up the settings for the sonar or mapping. With the second press, it brings up all the features and settings available with the Hummingbird unit. Your exit button simply exits out of any menu screens. Or with the second press on a clear screen, it'll actually take you back through the list of your sonar or mapping screens. With one press of mark, it'll bring down a little drop menu with waypoint or record eye track. And with your second press, it brings up the waypoint created. So that'll be on your mapping. Go to, at one press, is spot lock at vessel, autopilot, or backtrack, or nav data. So these are basic settings used for your MinCoder or for your mapping screens. On the side, we have our hotkeys. What this allows is us to change through our sonar at the push of a button. To set one of these up, you go into your menu, select a sonar that you use frequently. For this, we use 360 view. And you press and hold our hotkey and our shortcut has been saved. So now we can switch through at the press of a button. Your power button has also has two features. Obviously you're on and off, or if you press it once, this allows you to stow your Altera, turn your sonar off if you do have the transducer on a Mincoda. It's got the light of the backlight, so that is how bright your screen is. It has your night mode and also standby mode. And now that we've learned what our buttons are, we're going to go through our settings. These are basic settings to get you on the water and get you sounding fish. On here we have all of our chirp settings. I don't touch any of that sort of stuff. This is all straight out of the box and it's all connected and user friendly. Down here you'll see that these are all our chirp settings and our 2D switch fire settings. We just leave these alone. That's just to do with the transducer and how it actually works. If we skip across, these are the settings that you can play with. In your setup here, you can see that we can change the units. So you can change this from knots to meters to kilometers. Everything that you need to get yourself started is in this screen. So we can see here units in speed, that's kilometers per hour, miles per hour or knots. So whatever is easiest for you to understand, you can go through these settings and change. If we go back to the top, this is your views. So this is when you hold the view button down these are the views that are actually visible. So if you find that you don't use certain breakups of these, you can actually turn them to hidden. And when you're pressing that view button a few times, it means that you don't have to scroll through so many sonar views to get to the one you're looking for. In here, we've got accessories. So if you're setting up your phone through Bluetooth as displayed down here, that'll actually allow text messages to pop up on your screen so you don't have to pull your phone out. Or if you're setting up your iPilot settings, this is where you're going to come and find everything. All right, now we're going to take you through the settings that's used on all of the sonar. This is the sort of place that you can come and play with getting a better image on your unit for the environment that you're fishing in. So if you're finding that the unit's not bringing up quite enough detail, or you feel like there should be more, you can play with these here. These are the down sensitivity and the down imaging contrast. You can see with the sensitivity, when I bring it up, there's a lot of clutter down here in the water column. I don't like too much. I do like a little bit. I'd bring that down to about 12. So you can see here we're relatively clear 
but we're still picking plenty of bottom structure and plenty of bait fish and fish that are hanging up the top here. If we go back into it, you've got your contrast. Now what this is, is actually how defined those colors are. So if I bring that right up, you'll see here how detailed that image is now. But if I bring this right down to three, you'll see it's blocked out a lot of that structure imaging. So if you're fishing structure and you really wanna know what's down there, turn your DI contrast up and you'll bring out all of these fine details. We leave our range, range is always on auto, that allows if the bottom drops or rises, it'll adjust with it. Your chart speed is usually pretty good. If you're just sitting there on the electric or drifting or even at a slow moving pace, the chart speed straight out of the box is perfect. The one we get asked about most frequently is how do I change the colors on my screen? It's straight down here in DI colors and it's as simple as flicking through until you find a color that you like. Personally, I like the blue and the green. I find that it defines that bottom color and the fish color. So that's a basic run through guys on the buttons on the face of your screen and all their features. G'day guys, Dale here from Wellington Point Marine and Hummingbird Pro Staff. Today I'm here to talk to you about the Hummingbird Helix range of units with Mega Imaging. We're gonna get straight into it guys. We're gonna to talk to you about dual spectrum sonar. So this is your basic sonar that we've got uh, here on the Hummingbird Helix 8. Now basically what we're gonna have a look at is what you're actually seeing in these shots. So basically what we've got here is we've got a, a good lump of bottom with a depth change. There's a good solid bait ball up here and we can see just on, on behind these bait balls are some really good deep readings. Those are arches as they're commonly called and pretty well in sounder terms, they're fish. So with your dual spectrum sonar, they come in a narrow and a wide beam. So when you're on the narrow beam, it's gonna be better for your deeper water, 30 to 50 meters, and it's gonna be used for pinpointing those fish. If you're on your wide, that's better when you're on the drift, chasing snapper or pelagics, and you're looking for that bite uh, that may be a little bit wider of the boat. All right, so back in the dual spectrum chirp in the, uh, the traditional sonar, um, we're gonna start off, we've got, we're looking at a uh, bottom depth here of 13.2 meters, and the boat's going about nine kilometers per hour. You can see here, we've got a very dark, deep red line. That's showing that the bottom's very dense. You can also see up here on top of this uh, depth change, there's a little bit of yellow and red. So what that's indicating is it could be some vegetation or a tree. Now, basically down here, we've got some lighter green. So that's a very light density. So it could be some bait fish or some prawns hanging up there. And down the bottom here, we've got some very solid red markings, which are showing as solid fish. So they're quite a large object and the red is showing that that is very dense. Okay, so for the next part, we're gonna have a look at the mega down imaging. Now, mega imaging to Hummingbird is sort of what has built this company over the last 12 months, and it's really made them stand out from the competitors. What mega imaging is, is it's 1.2 megahertz. So usually you'd have a down scan like this sitting at 855 kilohertz. Now, when Hummingbird brought out the 1.2 megahertz, you'll notice that how much clearer this bottom is and the structure is so much easier to see. Now you're gonna use this for finding fish on key structures. So the barra guys up north, the bass guys in the dams, and even to your 50 to 100 meters of water, this sonar will reach the bottom and it'll be perfect for finding those structure holding fish. Now for the one that everyone wants to know about, the mega side imaging. This is quite commonly misconstrued on how to actually read side scan, which is basically using this transducer at the base of your boat. And it's not just scanning down from the base. You can see the transducer actually has angles either side. So what it's actually doing is it's shooting sideways as well. Now the easiest way to explain that is actually using a piece of our paper here. So when the boat's actually going along, the top of this crease here is the middle of your boat. That's your transducer. Now you can see on the angle here, this is actually how your sonar is being shot to the bottom. Once it reaches the bottom, it actually scans outwards, which is the rest of our page here. So if I lay this straight over the top of our side scan, you'll notice when I spread it out from the boat position, our three creases line up perfectly. So what you're actually looking at here, this is actually your water column, either side of your boat. You'll see the images on either side are actually a little bit different. Now that's because we do have a slight angle either side of the boat, and depending on your varying depth will depend how far that is out to the side. 
Slide scan is best used in your shallow waters. Again, this is misconstrued as what shallow is. So 30 to 50 meters of water, you can actually shoot 150 feet either side of your boat. So it's a nice clear image and it allows you to see fish that are a long way away from your boat. So if you're targeting fish that are schooling like snapper and jewfish or threadfin, or if you're targeting fish up in structure like your barramundi um, or your brim even, this is a really handy way to see those fish easily. So now we'll talk about a few of the features and external accessories that you can actually hook up to your Humminbird Helix series sounders from Gen 3 up. As displayed on the screen here, we've got our gauges. So if you've got a newer model motor, you can actually hook a NMEA 2000 port up directly to the unit and you can get everything from oil uh, temperature, your speed, fuel economy, everything like that can actually be translated straight through these gauges. This allows you, if you're building a new boat, or if you've got an existing boat, you don't have to have any gauges on your dash. It keeps it a nice clean setup and easy to use. Uh, the next one we'll talk about is iPilot Link. Uh, it's essentially, you're using your Minn Kota, um, anything from your Tarova up, to hooks directly to your Hummingbird through Bluetooth. What it allows you to do is pick a contour line on your Navionics mapping, and you can actually follow that at a set speed through your remote or through the Hummingbird unit. Uh, it also allows you to pick a bottom density. So if you're fishing, you want to fish hard bottom, you can actually pick that bottom density and actually follow those trails. It's a really, really cool feature, especially if you're fishing around islands or around deeper ledges. Uh, the last one we'll talk about is actually Auto Chart Live or Zero Lines cards. What this allows you to do, if you fish a spot regularly, you can actually turn on your Auto Chart recording and it'll use the transducer to add extra contour lines, it'll add your bottom density and hardness for using on the Minn Kota, as we just spoke about, and it'll also add your vegetation. So if there's weed beds or rock beds, it'll actually add those vegetation points in to your mapping on your Navionics. All right, guys, so that's basically a hummingbird sounder. Now, the advantages of buying hummingbird is they pride themselves on the fact that they're in independent retailers, like myself here at Wellington Point Marine. So we're all trained and taught on how to use these units. They also, have updatable software. So if you buy anything from a Gen 3 up and they come out with new software or a new transducer, it'll be compatible with your older unit. So there's no need to go buy units every five years. Okay guys, so I hope this has helped you understand your sander a little bit more. Get out on the water and I hope you catch plenty of fish. Yeah!